Weed control is important, but how it's done can influence erosion. For example, incorporating pre-emergent herbicides can lead to over-cultivation, which pulverizes the soil, leaving it open to serious erosion. Herbicides applied after the crop is up are the best choice whenever possible, because they don't require any cultivation. Most soil scientists today advocate minimum tillage whenever possible. That is, only cultivating as much as is absolutely necessary, and even then, using equipment that will do the least harm. Minimum tillage cuts down the number of operations, saves money. It also protects the soil from erosion, and it conserves moisture to grow better crops. Cultivating up and down the slope often results in erosion. Cultivating across the slope can slow the water movement down and prevent rills and gullies from forming in the field. Whenever possible, water should be left in its natural flow pattern. However, even water courses already eroded can be reclaimed. Start by removing the topsoil. Widen the water course. The bottom of the channel on the smallest waterway should be at least 12 feet wide, enough for easy haying operations. A V-shaped trench is not a good design because the water will flow through it quickly and with knife-like force eventually make another gully, only this time bigger than before. Shape the waterway like a shallow flat bottom saucer. The more water is anticipated, the wider the bottom of the water course should be. Once the saucer-shaped waterway is formed, put the topsoil back in and seed it to a mixture of grass and legumes. Waterways not grassed in will simply erode again, only this time even worse. But it doesn't stop with grassing. Maintenance is important too. Keep cattle off for the first two years to let the grass get well established. Always lift tillage equipment before crossing it. The waterway should not be used for a road. That will kill the grass and the erosion problem will be back. Tall growth should not be left over the winter because it will trap snow and could hinder drainage or even encourage erosion. When there is a lot of snow, it's a good idea to clear the drainage channels before breakup so water won't get blocked and overflow the banks. One more form of protection is the shelter belt. In winter, shelter belts, slow drifting, provide shelter for birds and animals, protect the farm site, and cut down on home heating bills. Best of all, they help prevent erosion by slowing wind and water movement across the soil. Researchers are continuing to study erosion. Plot work is being done to find out more about soil losses and how to prevent them. From this research, perhaps more effective soil and moisture management practices will evolve that will make it easier to save precious topsoil. Protecting the soil starts with an attitude and carries on with a combination of water and soil management practices that cooperate with nature. They build up the soil rather than tear it down. When you think about it, we're not on this earth for very long. 
And perhaps we didn't inherit the land from our ancestors. Maybe we're borrowing it from our children. Will they thank us for looking after it? Or will they say, you left us land, but where's the soil?